What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That right there is my silent but never quiet partner, the Alexis Arguello Puppet. We got another great episode for you. Our guest is here. I'm ready to get down to it and chop it up with them. Let's do this. And here we go. All right. Mr. Joppy, how are you? How you doing, sir? Are you able to hear me okay? I'm glad to have you on here, man. It's a real pleasure getting the chance to talk to you. I'm glad we got a chance to do this. Uh, I got so much stuff that I want to ask you. Uh, First of all, uh, uh, well, you know, let me backtrack and start at the beginning here. Uh, How did a guy like you get into boxing? Uh, You you know, uh, every time someone comes on this show, it always seems like it's always like one of two stories. It's usually always either uh, a lot of fights when they were young, or they had a father that got him into it, or oftentimes it's both. Well, in my case, you know, you know, boxing always was uh, on my radar. You know, yeah. since since uh, the 1976 Olympics when I was watching Sugar Ray Leonard and Howard Davis and the Spinks brothers, yeah, uh, uh, Heidi, all those guys, and um, Charles Mooney. And it's been on my radar ever since. I never, I, I always went to gyms in the D.C. area playing around with it, you know, at age 11, 12, even to my teenage years. Right. But I didn't get serious about it until I was 20. My okay. first my first amateur fight was March 16th, 90, 1991. And I was, I was, that was my first amateur fight. I was 20. And that's when I uh, well, took it and went full blast with it. And a lot of times when guys are coming up, uh, you know, and starting in a sport, they've got like an idol or that guy that they look at and they want to emulate. Did you have that guy? Who was that guy for you? Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. Hey, hey, that's good role models right there. You can't beat those two. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, do you remember what it was about Sugar Ray Leonard? Well, what, I mean, the, you know, there's so many things to pick from, obviously. I mean, the boxing ability was off the charts. Obviously, the charisma. I mean, what, what was it that attracted you to him? I mean, he had everything. He did. He had, he had the, you know, the flashiness, the, uh, you know, the boxing ability. But he had that, he had that, 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 that lion that, you know, you know, one, one thing about Sugar Ray Leonard, and they say it a lot in the D.C. area, when he's uh when he gets it, when he gets his opponent hurt, man, he will not let you off the hook. Yeah, and, uh, I, and I seen that, you know that the, the 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 best fight ever to me is Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, the the first one, eighty one. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was the greatest fight ever. Very I, I, memorable. In my opinion, that's no fight tops that. And what about uh, as far as the current sport goes? Uh, 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 do you still keep a keen eye on the sport? And if so, are there guys right now that you have a, a keen interest in watching? Like in the you know, like out of the new fighters right now, is there somebody that's fighting right now that you say, "Oh, when he fights, I got to see him." Yeah, Javante Davis. I've been you know, I've been keeping yeah. him on the man. Yeah, yeah. I watch him, man. He's an exciting fighter, man. Every time he comes, he, he comes to fight. Uh, he uh, he he's a crowd pleaser. He yeah. always give people what they want. So I, you know, I love I love Javante Davis. One of his uh, uh, his previous opponents, Ryan Garcia, uh, uh, pulled off a big upset last weekend. Did that surprise the hell out of you? Yeah, it kind of. I mean, I you know I know Ryan Garcia. He's a great fighter. I, I, I like him a lot. Um, but yeah, you know, leading up to the fight, he, the antics he was coming with, I was like, man, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, he's serious about this. You know what I mean? But uh, he uh, he pulled it off. He pulled it off. It was a great win for him. I mean, yeah. being as though, being as though, uh, 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 David, David Haney and Ryan Garcia, they got a history. They fought, I believe they fought six times in the amateurs. Yeah. And they both, they both, they three and three apiece. That was the rubber match. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, um, I, I'm curious uh, because you are an old school fighter. Uh, I'm curious to get your opinion on uh, uh, when you see these. Uh, I call them gimmick fights. I mean, I guess they're real fights. But like when you see these hybrid fights, these MMA guys against boxers, or you see these Jake Paul type spectacles. Uh, ultimately, do you like these for the sport, or are you not a fan? No, I'm not a fan of that, man. No. I mean, I, you know, just like just like um. What's his name? One of the, one of the, Jake Paul. I think it was Jake Paul's brother. They wanted to. Uh, I heard that the Saudi Arabia wanted to bring boxing to, uh, you know, bring the, the main bo- fights in boxing to Saudi Arabia, and um, I think Jake Paul, 
you know, wanted to go. But they said, nah, we want boxers, you know, real fighters. I'm, yeah. That's how I feel, man. You know, I, you know that's how I feel about them. I don't, these guys, I mean, you know, with, with the internet and YouTube and all that, you can you can become famous any kind of way now. That, you know, you sure can. Yeah, you're yeah. not kidding. Yeah, it doesn't take much these days. Yeah, <laughs> sadly. Yeah, you can get on your you can you can get on your phone and become famous in a week. You sure can. Yeah, something goes viral for you. Yeah, and you, you know, I mean, I don't know how long that fame lasts though. Sometimes it's short lived. You know. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. And and so you have so many amazing names on your resume. I'm curious for you, what would be your career highlight? Like, what was the biggest moment for William Joppy? I mean, when I won the title, when I went to Japan in 96, yeah, yeah. You know, I came back with the title. I mean, Shinji Takahashi, he's not a big name in the United States, but that was, uh, you know, just just for me to go uh, travel to Japan, 19-hour trip when the whole country was against me. And uh, and I came back with the title in 96. That was June 96. Yeah, I remember. After, yeah, yeah, after fighting for only five years. So um, that, that was, uh, you know, Breathtaking, man. Amazing. And because you have all these great names on your resume, I'm curious if there was ever a fight that uh, uh, that eluded you, you know, that didn't come to fruition that you really wanted. Yeah, the fight when I fought Trinidad. Yeah. You oh, know, so you wanted to run that back again. Yeah, I mean, what, I mean, you know, he, you know, Trinidad was loading loaded his gloves. I mean, I, did you hear about that? You've been very vocal about that. Yes, yes, I, yeah. I, and and. and and I have heard that, yes. Yeah, I mean, Trinidad, I mean, but not how it's caught, but like, I, it was like when I fought him, you didn't see William Joppy. Right. That was because I'm gonna tell you why. I never, I never bounced back. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know where I was at the whole fight. I don't even remember the fight. Yeah. You know, you know I mean, he hit me with with those loaded gloves and brass knuckles, and you know, I, I believe Don King knew something about it. Okay. I, I believe he did because he was he wanted to protect his investment. He wanted to make sure Bernard Hopkins and Trinidad would be in the championship. You remember there was a middleweight tournament. Oh yeah, right? that was a huge fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I believe I believe I believe he has something to do with that. And you know, boxing, you know, uh, is um is, is a shicey sport. Two, I'm telling you something. Two things I did. My 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 original managers, J D. Brown and Ollie Dunlap, mm -hmm. who. I left, which I which I shouldn't have done. Uh, let people get in, into my head. I left the managers, and I I went with another manager, Steve Steve Nelson and uh, Stan Hoffman, which I never should have done. Um, but two things I did in my boxing career that I regret: changed my managers. I should have stayed with Doc, Ollie Dudley, right? Uh, Ollie Dunlap and uh, J D. Brown. I, that's that's one. And two, the second thing, I should have never moved a female into my house. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst thing I did. Yeah, hey, listen, uh, 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 as a guy that's been married twenty five years myself, I got to make sure the wife isn't anywhere within earshot. But you know what? I wouldn't disagree with you. I'm not going to yeah. disagree with you. Yeah, just being you know young, young. You know, I was young, getting money. I never had sure. money before. You know, and yeah. you know, but that was that was them. The, them are the two things I will I regret. If I could press press the rewind button and go back, I would have stayed with J D. Brown and Ollie Dunlap. And I wouldn't have moved the female to my house. Women and me do tend to make us go a little crazy, don't they? Yeah, I mean, she, <laughs> she, you know, she was a, she was a, she was a liability. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear yeah. you. And, I, and you've even been vocal up to and including uh, uh, even saying that Trinidad. Uh, you've even been uh, uh, critical of him being in the Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame, man. That would have been my man. He was telling me for me. That would have been my. That was my Hall of Fame fight. He yeah. cheated me out of the Hall of Fame, man. And you know, like I said, he should never make it into to the Hall of Fame. I mean, come on, man. He cheat. I mean, he loaded his gloves up, and like I told you, man, I, I didn't even know where I was at. And people judge a lot of people judge me on that fight, but that wasn't William Joppa. Yeah. You know, where do you think the sport is right now as far as, like, uh, uh, you know, obviously Saudi Arabia is becoming a huge player in the sport now. It seems like a lot of the big fights are going over there. Uh, obviously, we saw Showtime got out of boxing here this past year. Uh, uh, like, where do you think boxing lands? And, uh, you know, is boxing going to find a home somewhere? And where do you think that home is going to be? Is it going to be the zone? Um, boxing always seems to land on its feet somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, boxing. You know, that's, that's a great sport. You know, um, I don't think that 
uh, uh, MMA will, will, you know, ever over, you know, will overshadow boxing. Now, I never, I know, well, boxing, like you said, always lands on his feet. Uh, we just got to put some big, we got to put the big fights together. You got to get the people what they want to see. Yeah. And, I, and, and if we do that, it, it's just going to always stay alive. What was your amateur career like? Do you remember much of your amateur career and like what you uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, you know what did you take away from your amateur career? Yeah, my amateur career was you know uh, it was short. Uh, I uh, 91, 92. I had forty amateur fights, thirty six or four. Um, I made the Olympic trials in ninety two. Uh, I lost to uh, Chris Bird in, in the Olympic trials in Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, uh, it, it was, it was, I had some great experiences with it, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I boxed with, um, you know, we got travel with Oscar De La Hoya, Chris yeah. Bird, Shane Mosley, uh, Stevie Johnson, Larry Donald, all those great guys, man. I, I you know, I mixed it up with those guys and it was great. You know, it was short. I had, Chris Bird, I, I, I had Chris Bird on, I had Chris Bird on yesterday. Oh yeah. 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 We fought, we fought at one. He went up to heavyweight. Yeah. We, we he fought actually at that. He actually wants to come back, and he looks fantastic. And you know what? He wants to come back as a middleweight. Oh, he lost all that weight. Yeah, I did see. He did come down. Yeah, he looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah he looks fantastic. And uh, you know, I'd say why not? I mean, as you said, nowadays almost anything goes. Nowadays, I mean, everybody can get a fight nowadays. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're about to see Mike Tyson fight again. Oh yeah, Mike Tyson. Is that fight still on? Did he's gonna fight? fight Jake. He's gonna fight Jake Paul, which I know you just said that you're not a fan of, and I'm not really a fan of those kind of fights either. But no, no. But you know, hey, hey, what's what's the, what's the old saying? Money talks. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, you're yeah. not kidding. And uh, uh, so outside of Javante Davis, you know, who you obviously said you're a fan of, are there any fights coming up that you're excited about? Well, I heard he was fighting a guy, Frank Martin. Yeah, Tank is fighting Frank. Yeah, I mean, he, I, mean, I, mean I, I, I mean, even fights the Tank is involved in. Are there any fights the rest of the year that you're excited about? Um, I was, I was, I wanted to see the rematch with Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, but that's I don't know happened. what's going on with yeah. that. Yeah, that's, Terrence that's is gonna, he, yeah, Terrence is going to fight this summer, but he's going to fight uh, uh, some guy at 154 pounds. Okay, yeah, but I, yeah, I, I was, I was, uh, I was, I, I was, I was banking on that fight to happen, but I don't know if it's gonna happen, and I don't know, I don't know the condition uh, Earl Spence is in. So, um, that fight, who else? Uh, I can't think of none right offhand. Are you excited about Fury and Usyk? Say it again. Are you excited about Tyson Fury and uh, and, and Usyk? They have a big heavyweight fight coming up. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I've really been keeping up on the heavyweights. Uh, ever since uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, wow, those those were some great fights, man. Very good. Those, yeah, they were some great fights. Yeah, but um, yeah, I like I like to see um, I like to I like to see uh, Tyson Fury though. I, I like I like him. Entertaining. Yeah, I like him. <laughs> Entertaining. Yeah, to say the least. Now, uh, uh, I'm curious to know. Um, uh, you know, you fought in middleweight, you fought at super middleweight, you even fought at light heavyweight, all those weights in between. Where do you think you did your best work? Like, what was your best, you, you know, weight class for you that you thought that that was the best part of your career? Uh, middleweight, middleweight. Yeah, you felt, yeah. You, you felt that was where you were at your best, middleweight? Yeah, I'm a middleweight. Yeah, long, you know, long the train right properly at middleweight was well, where I was comfortable. But you remember, I remember my first... My first three amateur fights was were light heavyweight. Yes. Yeah. yeah my were light heavyweight until I got a new trainer, Charles Mooney, which was on he was on the nineteen seventy six Olympic team. Yep. With uh with he got the silver medal. He was on the seventy six Olympic Olympic team with Sugar Ray and the Spinks brothers and Howard Davis. But he said, uh, I fought my first three amateur fights at one seventy eight. Before he got to the gym I trained at. When he got there, he said, what the hell are you fighting 178 for? Because I was weighing 173 yeah. with my clothes on. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to 165 as an amateur. Then I went to 160 as a pro. 
And now, do you think it's a big deal? Like we see so much made about like weight. Like we saw Ryan Garcia came in, you know, came in three pounds uh, overweight. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when Ryan fought Tank Davis, uh, you know, there was a hydration clause, like where, where, where you know where they couldn't put on a certain amount of weight. Do you like these kind of weight clauses, and uh, or do you just think that it should be, you know, whatever you come in at? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because I think whatever you come in at, because we're gonna get a good fight. I mean, it makes a difference. I mean, if you, uh, we're just, just, but see, the, the, the fighter got to stay disciplined, right? Because the, 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 the live as a boxer, as a fighter, that's a dis, it's a disciplined lifestyle. Yeah, uh, you shouldn't go no more than ten pounds over your weight class off when you're off. You know, you're off. You know, off season. Yeah, uh, you, you gotta, I mean, you got to live. You got to live boxing. Um, weight makes a difference. It makes a big difference of you know in your performance. Right. So, so I think I think Ryan got said, you know, yeah, I think he came in. He, he looked so much better fighting against Devin Haney than, than he did when he fought against Javante Davis. And then yeah. that was the difference. Yeah. Yeah. The weight. Yeah. yeah the weight. A couple of pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was your uh, now? What was your uh, 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 your upbringing like as far as, as like at what age did you know, uh, you know, that you had, you know, uh, the ability to box? Well, like I said, I, I you know I played around with it, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, went to gyms, and but I didn't take it seriously. You know what I mean, I, I don't I, be honest with you, I don't think I would have had the discipline at the time. You know what I mean, at that fourteen, fifteen. And what was the moment when you realized, uh, you, you know, hey, I'm pretty good at this. I should start taking this seriously. When I was um, fighting in tournaments with Oscar De La Hoya and uh, yeah. Shane Mosley and. You know, realizing that they started boxing at the, you know, at a young age, six, seven, eight, nine years old. Yeah. And I just started at twenty, and I was like, "Hey, I must be pretty good." So yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this. And what do you think about the, um, uh, um, you know, the fact that sometimes we don't get, uh, uh, you know, it seems like sometimes. You, you you brought up big fights before. It seems like sometimes it's a struggle to get big fights made nowadays. You know, what do you think holds these big fights up? Um, Money? Yeah, I mean, it, it's not a, it's not a problem if if the people want to see it. Right. I think, it, it, see, like I think like like let's let's use uh, Shakur Stevenson as as a, as an example. Okay. Uh, he we. I don't think that he's a great fighter. I'm not taking my hat off to him, but I don't. He's not a people pleaser, right? You know, he, you know people don't want to see him. They, they want to see Javante Davis. They know right. Javante Davis coming with that bomb. He's gonna be a good, you know, a good fighter. Yeah. So you, you got to give the people what they want. Sugar Ray Leonard, he had to, you know, he had to, he could give the people a show. I mean, yeah. he, every every time he fought, he showed he sold the arena out. So I think it's uh. I mean, you got great fighters, but do but but are they exciting to watch? Right. People want to see a good fight. I don't. I mean, I'm a boxer. I I, I like to watch. Um, let me tell you, two guys I love watching. But like to the app, to just a boxing fan that's not really in the boxing like I am. Right. They really wouldn't understand. They would, you know, they rather watch Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson, you know, Mike Tyson don't knock someone out. Right, right. But two, the fight that I like watching because their skill, their technical skills, they both were slick. Mike McCallum and James Tony. Oh, I love James. I've had James on the show. James is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them two yeah. guys. Man. But I just I love watching those two fight and just just watching, you know, the how they, you know, how they critique, how slick they were the inside fighting. Yeah. That's a great fight to watch. And it's also, and you also got to take into account too. Like you bring up a good point with Shakur and some of these guys, you, you know, in the style that they fight. You got to think that you're trying to get people to put down their pay per view dollars too. You know, right. I mean, you know, you can be a great boxer, but not necessarily a pay per view star. Absolutely, you, gotta, you, you know, there is a great. difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Yeah, like I said, Shakur Stevens is a great fighter. You, you can, you can, you can't deny that. But do the people want to see him fight? Right. That's the now, question. 
Now, in your mind, you know, you know, you hear a lot of people talk, especially a lot of young people talk, and this goes for all sports. You always hear the term thrown around, the GOAT. Who's the GOAT? Who's the GOAT? In your mind, who's the boxing GOAT? You know, the greatest of all time. If you had to pick one guy. Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard for you is that guy. Yeah, man. Sugar Ray Leonard bad man, man. I mean, he, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, so now, what do you think we got this mentality when everybody kind of all of a sudden, it seems like, you know, sometimes we don't get big fights made because, you know, uh, uh, people are afraid to lose their all. It seems like there's so much made about being undefeated nowadays. Uh, are people kind of got that mindset because of what Floyd Mayweather did? I think so. Yeah, yeah. people just don't want to yeah. be undefeated. You know, it, it seems to mean a lot more now to be undefeated. Even though we see lots of great boxers have got losses. Manny Pacquiao, the Oscar De La Hoyas. You know what I mean? They're, they're, everybody has some losses. But it seems like now everybody's very protective of their own. Yeah, I think, I think, I, I do think Floyd Mayweather um, kind of started that. Yeah. But let me take that back. Sugar Ray Leonard and Muhammad Ali. I, I got them at the, at the time. Yeah. You got to put them yeah. both there. You got to put them both yeah, there. Yeah, you got to put them both there. Because I, I look not only... Was Muhammad Ali great inside the ring? But, but, but what he did outside the ring? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, stood up. I'm glad you said that, yes, because I do believe there's more to being a champion than just your in-ring skills. Muhammad Ali was just that guy all around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I got to put them there. I got to put yeah, Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. I, gotta take, I can't forget him, so I'm sure I'm sure people that are watching this, well, you know, would be curious to know uh, uh, how has life after boxing been for William Joppy? What are you currently doing right now? Well, right now, you know, I just started a nonprofit organization last year. Okay. Got, yeah, breakfast is called Breakfast with Boxers. I go to I go to homeless shelters. We feed the homeless. We sit down. We break bread with them. We play dominoes, checkers, whatever the case may be. We talk to them. I give them a word of encouragement. Uh, I bring I bring uh, uh, people with me. And so we talk about, our, you know, our issues in life and how we overcome it. Uh, also, I put on 5K and 10K races. Okay. We stress health and fitness. You mean you got you got to feel good. You got to be healthy. And when you when you're healthy, you feel you you feel good about yourself, and you can make things happen in uh in your life. So we 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 uh we, we push that. And do you have any involvement in the sport at all, as far as boxing, or, or or do you have any interest? You you know what I mean? Like you know, will we ever see William Joppy, you know, as a trainer or in someone's corner? Do you feel like, or do you feel like boxing is a chapter in your life that's done? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, but you can't. I won't count that out. Never, I still go never. Yeah, I still, I still go. I'm still, in, I'm still in the gym, and I still, you know, I, I, I train fighters, and I, you know, like I'm a person training part time. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm in the gym. You know, that's 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 a lifestyle. Yeah, a lifestyle, a lifestyle that you a, a lifestyle that you always adhere to. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I always, you know, once a boxer, always you're always in the gym. Some not as much as I used to be, but I'm in the gym a lot. You always have the mentality. Yes, sir. The mentality is always there. So, uh, 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 but otherwise, though, uh, everything else in your life is good. Your health, everything is 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 going well. Everything's going well, man. My children, you know, they're fine. Everything's well. Well, um, just maintaining, just maintaining, living life, and I can't complain. How about grandchildren? Is William Joppy a grandfather yet? No, no, not a grandchild. No, not I'm yet. Not, I'm not a grandfather, no. Yeah, I am. I got six. You got six? I was, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, know, I know you spoiled them. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, you know, it's kind of your job as a grandparent. You know I mean? You kind of have to. You, you, you know, and the good thing is you spoil them and then you give them back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then it's my kid's problem and I can just stand back and watch the fallout from it all, you know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I, listen, William. I, I I really appreciate you doing this, man. This has been a real honor getting the chance to talk to you, man. Uh, I'd like to ask you. I hope you'll stay in touch. I would love to do this again sometime. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Anytime, man. Just call me. Let me know ahead of time, man. We can make it happen. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. It's been a real honor, and I'm glad to see that everything is going well for you, man. And uh, I'm it's, I'm really super happy to hear hear the work that you're doing. Uh, you know, your charitable work. It's amazing. Oh yeah, it's www breakfastwithboxers.com check it okay. out, take the website out I will, and so for people that want to get involved you, you know, uh, the, that's the site that they go to, and if they want to get involved there's options there for them to get involved and help out? Yes sir, yes sir 
Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate you doing this, Mr. Joppy. Been a real pleasure. Been nice talking to you. I uh, have a good have a good one. Yes, sir. You keep in touch and we'll do it again, okay? Okay, no problem. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too. There he goes, folks. That is Mr. William Joppy. If you are a boxing fan, you remember William Joppy. Come on. How can you not? Uh, we remember him in such memorable victories over Howard Eastman, over Jonathan Reed, TKOing Roberto Duran late in his career. Let's, let's not forget that. Manos de Pedra, hands of stone. Yeah, William Joppy got that W. Don't forget it. Uh, it, it but the, the man was in there with uh, uh, all the big names in his era. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, Felix Trinidad, Lucian Boutte, Jermaine Taylor. The list goes on. A star-studded, stacked resume. That is the great William Joppy. So great to see him, and so great to see him doing extremely well. Uh, always love to see that, man. So really want to uh, extend a huge thank you to William Joppy for coming on Off the Couch Boxing. I know that the Alexis Arguello puppet, while quiet, was excited. It was a quiet excitement. And he won't confirm or deny that, as usual. Par for the course for the Alexis Arguello puppet. But anyway, make sure that you tap in. You're not getting great boxing conversations like this anywhere else on the internet. Maybe anywhere else in the whole galaxy. Except right here on Off the Couch Boxing. Make sure to like and follow us on Facebook. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Stay tapped in. This is the place to come. Rex Ruger is your guy to deliver the best conversations with all your favorite people in the boxing world. This is the place to come. Stay tapped in. And remember, folks, if you want to be a champion, you have to roll with the champs.